So after my uh, bit shoot got uh, deleted, there was no confirmation I wasn't going to get any, I assume, from BitChute. Um, and as has shown, numerous uh, correspondences completely ignored. I mean, it's just a waste of time. It just, yeah. So rather than leave it at that, I decided, you know what I'm going to do? Um, I'm just going to set up some more and uh, I'm going to test my theory. So I set up, um, well, two accounts that I'll show you anyway. <laughs> I set up lots of things. I had bright ideas. It's like, okay. So, you know, I used, only had um, one archive account. Now I'm going to create more and spread around multiple copies of what keeps getting deleted off BitChute because it's now clear through direct action and Max Egan's confession that uh, Ray Vey of BitChute uh, is personally in contact with Max. Max rings him personally and allows him the ability and perhaps others that are also within the, the same arena um, certain luxuries that other channels don't get or even get to pay for. And I, interesting enough, I went to check to see if this comment, I'll get to this comment in a minute, this comment that I'd left, I'd posted it three times. The first time Max and I had a conversation and you can't delete off BitChute, you can't delete the comments, you know, so you can only flag them. So Max gets on the phone to his mate Ray and within hours the original comment that I posted that he had replied to, my original comment was pulled and it looked like he had posted this comment that was out of context. And interestingly enough that the second time I posted the, the comment it got pulled down again, completely disappeared. So I went and put it up a third time, you know, this was hours and hours later and I just checked before and it's been pulled down again, disappeared. And then I just happened across another comment that was out of context that Max had clearly got someone else's comment deleted and his reply and the following bits of thread off it were left as the main one. And it's like, wow, Max and Ray, you know, they're good buddies. He's got a lot of good buddies, hasn't he? I'm going to get into um, a, a bigger pool of mateship later on, but uh, I'm going to try and stick to why I'm doing this video today because uh, I wanted to get it answered. I've got here a BitChute channel that I've just started uploading all the other stuff that I had and some new stuff too that I haven't even got to upload. And um, this one, Chewing the Fat, see the bushfire picture here? I deliberately put that up because it's a burner channel. I fully expect it to get pulled down. Now I didn't realise this but um, every video I uploaded I didn't stick under a category. So nobody was finding it anywhere. And even if you searched for Max Egan, it, the search results only tell you by the most views. So if you went to page 100, you still would be looking at people that have put up something about Max Egan that have maybe had 100 and something views on it. You know, how many hundreds of pages you've got to go through. And there's no go to the end of the search on BitChute. you just got to keep searching and searching through. So essentially, no one could find my Max Egan videos. And I knew this. No one could find these videos either. Now, whether I did it uh, deliberately or subliminally, it actually proved the point that they are both under the same status of invisibility. No one knows they're there. Don't, don't even know they exist. 
But then uh, I decided that um, I had already been talking because I also created a few different email accounts and um, I've been talking to Max on a few of those email accounts and each one I just asked a singular question on because he's a simple man we just need to do it one question at a time so he has answered certain questions for me I'm not going to clarify and get into that too much at this stage because I'm still waiting for clarification on other things and you know what I don't want to um, tip my hand so to speak too much now the poor thing with, about Max is that he can't understand why I object to him why so many object to him and the thing is that now I've actually experienced it and seen it and recorded it, which is why I'm not going to get into too much of it here too, because I've got all the screen recordings. This is actually the start of it all. Um, I left a comment. Let me bring that comment up for you. All right. Now, I've highlighted that bit there because that was the bit I just copy and pasted onto his most recent one because that comment shouldn't be classified in any way shape as, of form as doxing maybe the others but yeah you see the reason that um, I uh, put the the burner image on there it's a burner channel it's there to answer a question. How connected is Max Egan to Ray V and BitChute and how much will BitChute protect him from any negative press? So I set up the situation. I am a creator being after all. So I created this comment, this whole comment, the first one, the one that's been deleted three times now, um, I posted that comment, hang on I'll bring it up, and within a very short amount of time, and this is why I wanted to bring in the recordings and also the email conversations because it shows who he actually responds to like you know he's sitting there on the computer and he sees a message and he goes oh that's just some guy asking a random thing I'm not going to answer that oh here's a girl and he answers me back you know much love Max it's like yeah so even in observing through several different emails at the same time how he responds to different questions and there are only one question coming from each each person as I said he's a simple guy so I posted that and within the short amount of time you have to understand that this these following conversations now are going on within you know minutes of each other as soon as he sees it so he said yes Ray removed your channel for doxing it is illegal to reveal people's home address online without their permission and is only ever done to encourage physical harm against them it is the same reason this comment and channel will also be removed and no I'm not involved in any land deals I'm simply I simply interviewed someone you can make up whatever toxic fantasies you like okay so he's not involved in any land deals but down here he says and the comment that he deleted here actually showed it better see this Oh, and the developer gave me a share into the project which I donated to my sister. So he's not involved 
He doesn't know the people, but for some random reason, they've donated, given him a share in the project, and he's given it to his sister. Yeah. Smelling a little bit fishy here. The thing I found a little bit uh, difficult to understand too was he said here, now he should know by the way I'm talking to him that I'm the same person. But he says here, the developers are well aware of your you and your actions. And it's like, yeah, duh. But he's just mentioned it after 86 court injunctions, which I thought a bit weird. Then you go further down the comment and he says, I, n I have no idea who you are or why you have made it your personal mission to shut me down. So he thinks that what my YouTube channel is somehow run by Linda. Linda did leave me a call. Um, I keep calling her Linda now because she comes up as GI Linda. That because I've talked about one of the victims, Gillian Norman, that he thinks that I must have known her or met her, that I couldn't see the wrong that has been done to another human being and be angry about that. You know, so he obviously thinks that, um, like, who's you? Like, if he thinks that I'm to do with Gillian Norman there and I am her and he knows who I am and your actions, what, is he going to Gillian Norman now? Even though when I revealed his address, I told him who I was, it was on top of my letter, uh, email, you know, the name at the top. It was also in the video that he never watched that he couldn't take to the cops and say, oh, you know, this person endangered my life. I want to sue her. And it's like, well, what'd she do? And it's like, I don't know. I didn't listen to it. Well, aren't you the dickhead? Go away. And when you know you, that there is something to worry about. And yeah, you'll have to give us your real name too, mate. Because if you've been impersonating another person, we'd like to know about that. <laughs> yeah, you hide behind a fake name. You think that you've you've protected yourself? No, you've actually left yourself very vulnerable because presenting yourself as a fraud, as not who you really are, is fraudulent. And to hide behind it, to be so scared of people finding out where a fake character might live yeah, but it's not only that. I'm surprised the rest of this thread isn't deleted. And I'm assuming it's the same with the um, one up above that he's done the same thing for where he's got the, the main comment that was deleted. I'd say that he can only hold that. But then again, why didn't he just get rid of the whole lot? Because for some reason, Max thinks that leaving his answer here and what I've said is making him look good. But it's not. It's not making him look good at all. And you know what? I'm not scared of saying what I think. You know, I call a spade a spade. He's full of shit. He's telling lies to everybody. Now, it's true about this development application too. And I did even more research into that over the weekend while um, prodding him with these. So I got to this stage. And clearly, you know, like when he, he didn't say goodbye, I'm disappointed. That's his usual ending. But maybe instead of goodbye when he can end it with a smiley face because he thinks he's got the last laugh. Well, I tell you what, it's really good when you've got someone that, one, I didn't know that was his address. He confirmed it. Two, I didn't know for a fact Ray would do that for him. Now, he's confirmed that. 
and through emails he's also confirmed other things. Now here's Ray Vahey that I didn't even know who he was and I brought up a um, couple of videos of his and his biggest thing is about making it big on YouTube bigger you know one of the biggest you know on the platform that banned him and I tell you what I'd already had ra red flags raised because of as soon as I saw Jeff Berwick with his plane and thinking of him living in Hawaii all I thought of was Epstein the Lolita Express and oh no and it's like nah try not to think that because it goes back to a comment that someone left the other day that someone told me in a comment today do you know that the person that got the your dick of the week award is supposed to be Mark McMurtry and I was like oh that's interesting because it was actually one of those comments the comments that associated uh, G.I. Um, Linda Norman with um, pedophiles uh, and it was like what but that seed of what was out of place was stuck in the back of my mind and when I saw Jeff Berwick jump on his plane in that picture from Dollar Vigilante it was like oh wow this it, it just w brought back that strange comment and it was it connected everything together that um, like the um, show that I'm about to tell you about there's not just one Epstein Island or Lolita Express and not just one area they target they target mainstream they target alternative and they seek to control every narrative through that. I did do another recording today that I explained it a lot in there. I don't know whether I'm going to do it again. I deleted it because there was this irritating hum in the background. So um, I'm doing it again and I sometimes forget when I've done things like this that I haven't said things again and I leave them out of the recording and when I look back at it I think oh well I'll just say it in the next one. So the point of starting off with this video was to show you that I had two channels on BitChute that nobody could see, nobody could really find and nobody had. Now after I posted that comment they knew it was there because as you can see that's the channel address there it matches up there and this is one of the earlier recordings I did because my whole thing here was to actually create a scenario and observe what happened from it to see whether people would behave in an anticipated way and believe it or not they not only behaved in that way but they also like I suppose I'm used to dealing with sharper tools these ones especially Max Egan I suppose I should thank him that he's had such a, a drug and alcohol history and he's got few brain cells and memory cells left but he incriminates not only himself but those he's involved with like He's incriminated Gunham in illegal um, marijuana growing simply by the fact that he said they have a hemp farm going there. Oh, they do not have a hemp farm. Dean Rodimer smokes like a chimney. You know, they all do. Even Max Egan. <laughs> Come on. They could not have a legal hemp farm. So if they're talking about how they're making money out of businesses and he reels them off and he said, and we've got the hemp farm, and Gunning gives him that look as if to go, hmm, yeah, he shouldn't have said that. Loose lips sink ships. Could not be a legal hemp farm. They don't even own the property to get the license and to get a license for that you pretty much have to have been a teetotaler your whole life and these two sober drunks 
You know, I, I am assuming they are both alcoholics that don't drink anymore. So, um, hang on. Okay, so this is my other channel now. Um, still hardly anyone's seen it. I did change the settings to different things so that they went under different categories. But as you can see, nobody really knows it's there because they would come down to search specific. Someone would have to be looking for them, uh, a particular subject, for it to come up in a search and for me to come up in a search on that subject and to be counted, it would have to be a fairly specific one. Otherwise, uh, you know, I'm going to come long on the list. So just before I started it, I went... Max has done another video today. I don't think I could be bothered listening to that. But just take a look at all the images... really uplifting aren't they oh, except for this one of his mate his landlord mmm other than that it's all grotesque and this is what he wants to constantly reinforce with people humanity is under attack media manipulation preparation of the coming purge fraud of the millennia I mean it just goes on and on and on clickbait titles, drama, drama, drama. And it's clear, yeah, we follow this, go to Patreon. And I did go to Patreon actually. And after I um, posed as someone in an email to Max Egan that was insulted because I had found my own channel and what I'd said about him. I just wanted to see what he'd say. Um, he said, thanks a lot for telling him. And he said, can you go back and report her? So, you know, maybe we should take a leaf out of Max's book and report him. Because um, how do we know that the activities that Patreon are enabling Max Egan to receive an income through are legitimate because when it comes down to something well off subject but not related cryptocurrency I found out is uh, heavily covering one of the biggest well the biggest crime as far as I'm concerned there is no greater crime than that to the innocent to our children to pedophiles and what they do and how everyone doesn't want to speak about it and anyone that does well it's hard no one wants to think about what these people do so when I get a flash of things like that I've had real life experiences where I've seen the memories of others that have been through that and they killed them so many and this was just one small group in one suburb, in one state, in one country. They're everywhere. And they trade and sell and abuse our children. And now they're using cryptocurrencies to hide behind. And so any man that hides behind cryptocurrencies and a fake name should be worried that anyone out there that loves their children is going to wonder, especially when it comes to Ray Vey and his hit channel on YouTube, Kids Nursery Rhymes. And this is just after I've made a connection at looking at Jeff Berwick's plane and Epstein and Lolita Express coming in to me and having watched The Dollhouse again, for the first time, well, for the first time in years, been reminded that what is set up isn't just one place. This dollhouse that creates these dolls and these scenarios, imprints, 
is one of 20. It's like Epstein Island is not the only island. Lolita Express was not the only plane. They are not the only players. But isn't it a coincidence when Max Egan had his meltdown and he said he didn't mention his name because you might understand why. Like there are things going on that I have mentioned a little bit of in videos but I have got this real thing that there is this Mary Maxwell involved. I know there's a Mary involved and the only Mary Maxwell I could come up with that could have been involved was <laughs> Um, yeah, related to some politician, and Maxwell was an unmarried name. And that was a long time ago. But Gisane, or Gisele, whatever, however you pronounce that witch's name, um, Maxwell? Yeah, Maxwell Egan. And you know that Richie Allen's name isn't his real name? Uh, guarantee you Vinnie Eastwood bet you he was a Clint Eastwood fan and he sort of you know marvels his ego after the Clint Eastwood I'm cool no you're not cool mate you're just a big obvious fraud to anyone with their brain activated and making choices in a more positive direction if they want to stay in that victim I can't change anything I've got no control over anything fine that is your choice but also it's a choice as history is shown even if we accept the history we're told one person can change the tide of history it only takes one person you know so if you think that you can't change anything because there's just too much? No. You have every choice over what you want to experience. And clearly, the choices that Max Egan has been making has been to, well, he's got a bit of an ego and he needs to defend an attack on himself. And he will only take it a short distance. So, you know, you've got to make the punches count and his responses count. Because, um, you know, the angrier you make someone, the more stupid are things they say by revealing, oh, I shouldn't have said that, you know. So, and he shouldn't have told me. He shouldn't have confirmed there is a direct personal link between him and Ray Vey. Well, Max goes to Anarchapolco, which is organised by Jeff Berwick of Dollar Vigilante. Now, Jeff Berwick, I came across a channel of his. Hang on, I'll just see if I can bring that up. Hang on, I'll bring that up in a sec. It's not actually a channel of his. It's actually a channel that someone has obviously set their sights on their own fake and fraud, like I have. Um, and this one happens to be Jeff Berwick. And this whole channel is just full of old clips of Jeff Berwick. And uh, tell you what, like the looking at the Ken O'Keefe ones and what's like, it's just... These guys are unstable, really not. And they seem to be the same kind of player, you know, because ultimately they've got to be charismatic to a certain level to bring in the people to control the narrative. But they also can't be too charismatic that they get too attached to somebody else that can't be controlled. So ultimately, if they can't be in a controlled relationship, they tend to not last in relationships. Now, the reason that I'm showing you these t my two channels, oh, before I get off it, if you wanted to go and make a complaint to Patreon, this is the closest you can get to Patreon. 
You see, Max Egan is using Patreon to receive money and donations on a regular basis. We don't know what that money is going to support. We have no idea what he is spending any of that money on. And ultimately, if he wants to hide behind a fake name and not be a real person and take any real responsibility in life, to even have his mates delete negative comments so that he can always have this shiny, clean image? No. Someone like that deserves more of my attention and certainly has got it. He wonders why I want to bring him down? Because he is a con and a liar and it's not on how many people... Like in the first place, I sat back and said nothing. But then I sat back and sat, said nothing and I watched how other people got hurt. And not in the community, but those involved in, in creating arrests in Melbourne because they went to that group or even got arrested on, in their own homes because they were putting posts on. All Max Egan fans. Max Egan interviews some of them. So here's a man that didn't even raise his own son, was never there for him, can't even function in a relationship ever, giving out any kind of advice to anyone. And he can't even do it in his own real self. He's got to hide behind a name and a character. He's scared. He's created his own prison. And because of that fear that he hides behind and is certainly not, not free in, he is re... well, not recreating it in others. He is passing on to those that have just woken up and they've said someone has said oh look i heard max egan he does this he's standing up for us rada 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 and before you know it he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do control the narrative we saw how miserably those protests failed in victoria how so many of them even got arrested before they even went to the protests and the ultimate beauty of it is that when you've got someone on the inside, even if they did try and plan something ahead, they actually trust your inside man, give him all the details, because he's the one that's supposed to tell everyone that, oh, look, you're on our side, we're all supposed to meet up here and fool the cops and the man. No, I tell you what, if Max Egan knows what you're doing, it's not a secret. It's all controlled narrative. So you don't know whether he is involved with anything untoward or where his money goes. And yet, Patron or Patreon are allowing him to funnel donations, 483 donations per month now, and the minimum is a dollar the maximum is a thousand so he could be getting he's getting a minimum of four hundred and eighty three dollars a month tax-free maximum add a few zeros on so what is Max Egan doing with the money that you donate to him he also leads you to Patreon to donate to the In La Keshe Foundation and the Full Circle Project that apparently he was the founder of. He circles it all there here to Patreon to take donations for foundations and charities that aren't even registered and that there's no oversight of even the money's that he's fraudulently accepting 
because people that are clicking on the bottom of the page to support the project are redirected to his Patreon account to support him on a monthly basis. So in so many ways, he is, misrepre he is misrepresenting everything. And we don't know what he's doing with that money. So if you felt so inclined to make a complaint uh, to Patreon that you don't feel comfortable that they support this kind of thing because you go to his Patreon account. So let's go to his Patreon account. What content has he created on here? Anything he's got on here came from his old channel. It's, un it's not functional. It's crap. This is what he gets money for. What money? Where's it going? And what's he spending it on? Is it even legal? Well, we know he smokes pot and that's not legal in Queensland. So he's spending it on something illegal or is it he, he's not spending it at all that he's getting it off Gunham's hemp farm that isn't a hemp farm, that isn't a legal farm? I mean, <laughs> we don't know, do we? So yeah, let's look at all the eight levels. He's got now... Oh, he had 483 the last time I looked. Someone obviously decided they didn't want to pay for his shit anymore. Get rid of that. So he's earning money for what he's supposed to have created on BitChute, which is nothing. His whole website funnels back for um, with the Inlakesh, as I said, and donations. It either funnels back to Patreon or to a, an account that is actually a bank account in the name of the In Lakesh Foundation, which again is not a legal entity, or he's getting more and more into this cryptocurrencies now, which is how he can afford to set up all this three speak and library and all of those things because they need cryptocurrency to. Not a, you even need cryptocurrency at library to even write any about information on your, your own profile. To do anything, you need cryptocurrencies. And that's why it offers rewards back because you've already spent them and each view brings you, you know, crypto rewards back. I mean, it's all nothing money anyway, so, yeah. But, um... Really, is this just not an abuse of the Patreon platform? Especially when Max knows, and has said it many times, he doesn't upload anything there because he knows that his account would get closed down. What he does would not be acceptable to Patreon, and he knows that. So if Max Egan can ask people to report and cause me grief, a real person, he's given my real name. If he wants to ask people to do that, well then surely a real person can ask other real people to call out a fake. That's all I'm doing. I'm not even going to ask you how to do it or advise you how to do it because I guarantee you this other channel that I found that is uh, focused on Jeff Berwick. You see, there were some people that were only in my peripheral vision and they're coming more into the uh, main focus now. It's a much larger controlled narrative involving cryptocurrencies and a lot of them meet up at Anarchapolco and they know each other personally, not only can ring each other up on the phone but they've met face to face they know each other they are friends and they are friends that are looking after each other's backs controlling a large audience controlling a narrative now if you'd like that to continue take Max's advice have no stake in the outcome sit back and do nothing on the other hand 
for every person that listens to Max Egan, he's is it is creating the negative that Max Egan is constantly talking about in his videos. The closer we come to that, because the more people that believe that is the reality, that that is all that we can create. They don't see beyond that. That no. That's just this gloomy guts vision of it. And just because he gets another one of his friends to agree with him doesn't make them right. We create what we experience or what we don't experience. This is why a lot of people are referred to as asleep because they are choosing not to experience being awake. They don't want to face that information because once you start looking at a little bit, it's a lot because it's connected to that and this and this and this and this. And before you know it, there's your head's just spinning from all these different things that you just couldn't believe that this stuff really happens, does it? That is shock to the system. And a lot of people in 2020 have experienced uh, an extreme shock to the system. They don't know how to cope with it. And Max Egan is feeding their anger over that by implementing a fearful outcome controlling the narrative about what they see is coming and thereby the more who believe it the more who will create it you need to believe that one person can change the world and if one person can change the world certainly one person can get rid of another fake Max Egan Pick your fake. Find one that you've got something on that gets under your skin, that you know they're a fake and you are just sick and tired of hearing them say the same shit over and over again, misleading people. And, well, in Max Egan's case, not only misleading people where they make bad decisions, but it costs them financially. And with this nightcap community... Very interesting, isn't it? Very interesting indeed. So yes. Oh look, he thought I went there to get, to join up and give him some money and he goes, Oh, thank you for that. I didn't give you any money. I tell you the only thing I'd give you, mate, is if I saw you face to face, my foot up your ass as I'm kicking you away. You're just a low down person. I really, you know, you wonder what I've got against you? Well, not you personally. There's plenty of fakes and frauds out there. You were the one that I focused on, so poor you, Max. We'll see how long you last. Anyway, so he put out his, what was it? The official COVID narrative is falling to pieces. It's like, oh. But I went there and I posted that um, part that I highlighted before for some reason if I went in there and deleted the paragraph in between it ends up in one long conversation so I prefer it to be like that anyway so that to me is a fairly innocent comment oh if you notice there too um, after um, Ray got my channel pulled down and my comments keep getting deleted by him. I decided, well, stuff it. I'll just leave, um, I'll just upload. There's over six gigabytes there and I'm just going to keep adding. I'm going to start up more archives and more other places where I'm going to stick stuff up to. Um, you can't delete my comment. Let's see if you do. There's nothing against that. You know, how much does Ray and Max need to protect Max Egan's reputation? I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that Ray has actually revealed himself so much in doing what has happened, deleting my channel. 
Has it been deleted? Does it does it look like this one? This is my log on for the old channel, so it's coming up with that. If you looked at that from the outside, you get a one line uh, one liner. Hang on, I'll bring up the other one. So here's the channel <laughs> after I've been <laughs> shit stirring Max Egan. What a shocker. The channel with the flames on it, the burner channel, got blocked. The one I dared to get blocked. The one purely dedicated to Max Egan and nothing else was stupidly blocked. Nobody was looking at it. But now they've actually shown that even with nobody looking at it, they do not want any information against Max Egan on BitChute. Ray Vey, you have just, well, don't play poker, mate. You just don't know how to play, do you? Seriously. But uh, blunt tools. Can you get a bit sharper, boys? Hey, Max, how about sending around those solicitors? Have you figured out that it's all the one person yet? And that I only met Gillian Norman on a comment um, a day ago, but the reason that I actually went and found her stuff was because of your mates that you're not involved with and don't know very well at the community. But hey, I've got more information on that too that shows very definitely involved, very personal basis. But, I, as I said, I'm not going to tip my hand with that too much. So, um, as you can see, my channel that doesn't have any Max Egan content is fine. No Max Egan, anti-Max Egan, fine. And, oh, did you see it? How many people have seen them too? And let me tell you that those three subscribers... One of them is rude, crude, and untattooed, and the other is chew the fat, and another is another channel I have at the moment um, that I subscribed myself to it too, so that if you hit on the um, little part of your profile that says subscriptions, like Ray Vey could, that even a two-year-old could connect the dots you know so I've created a connect the dots scenario for them as well as one where you know what unless I had left that comment yesterday Max Egan wouldn't have even known those videos were there my channel would not have been blocked uh, and then it would have got to a certain stage where a Max Egan fan came across it and then went and complained and sooner or later it would have happened but that would have happened after I've you know spent enough time and effort putting all that up there and they'd think ah, we've shut her up that's why he ended his comment with a big laugh because he thought the last laugh is his it's like mate laugh I do you know, I don't see you laugh very much. You're just a miserable old guts that's always telling people, you know, you live in a horrible world and you might as well get used to it because, you know, you can't do anything about it. Bullshit. <laughs> I laugh all the time when I'm being stupid, even when I'm being serious. Sometimes my son doesn't even know the difference between sarcasm and serious because of the way I say it. And I said, surely you should know now. And he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that's my way because some things that are serious you do need to say it with a certain amount of release of um, goodness from within yourself to ne take away the negative effect of it I suppose so you know that you quite often see that uh, somebody in a fearful situation would laugh because uh, they're trying to create the opposite emotion of what they're experiencing me I laugh because in my head I have a thought and I laugh out loud to it sometimes you know well, a lot of the time 
<laughs> because it, I mean, I, cre I set about to create a scenario and it's pretty much worked out exactly as I thought it would. If Ray had a vested interest to not keep any bad press about Max Egan out of Bitchute, how controlled are the comments and the channels? So after having my content deleted, how much other content has been deleted that is opposing the narratives? I bet you this guy on YouTube that is against Jeff Berwick had a bit shoot channel too, but soon found that no matter how many times you put it up, channel blocked. Because if you speak out against a controlled narrative, those within that circle will cover each other's back. They're controlling the narrative and the arenas in which we have the narrative in. Bitchute is more controlled than YouTube. Do you believe that? I don't. I've, I don't believe it and I've experienced it for myself. Now one could say that I set about to achieve something and I got exactly what I deserved. But the thing is here that you have to actually ask yourself, what crime have I committed against any real person and is it a crime to investigate someone that clearly tells you this is not my real name and you'll never know the real me is it wrong to investigate them or when you investigate is it classified stalking hmm Interesting concept, that, isn't it? What's the difference between investigating and being accused of being a stalker or a shill or anything like that? I mean, yeah, I can see one of these ones, like one of the guys that got um, his comment. I mean, he's, it's racially and re religiously motivated. So when you're creating um, contentions... Uh, along those lines, of course you're going to provoke a response. My response is more towards what he's doing on a personal level to people in real life in Australia that are buying into a community because they're buying into the bullshit he sells. And he does sell bullshit. The community is never going to go ahead. And let me show you why. Now we know the sales pitch is that uh, there's already development approval. And yes, there was development approval that lapsed back in 2014 for stage one works, which basically involved um, roads, car park for 69 cars and three buses and a bridge. So they had to do public roadworks. That's stage one before they could even present another development application with not only the concept proposal for the village but a detailed pr proposal for stage two. So that would be another development application that would need to be submitted once stage one was completed. Now there is no further development applications to do with any of the properties. Now I have to bring your attention here to the properties involved. So there are only three lots involved in this subdivision application that was approved and part of the original application was um, why it was amended was because they wanted six and they said no you can only have three now when they're talking about a three three lot division they specifically mentioned these three lots 
lot 1 to 1, lot 3 and lot 4. Now let me take you to the current nightcap development and show you where they fit in. The ones highlighted in blue here are those three lots that were the only three lots that were part of the Stage 1 development approval that lapsed in 2014. And there is no further development application lodged with the Council at any of these addresses. None of them. Except one guy, he wants to build a house and shed. Which isn't a de community development, it's just someone putting in what they do to build their own house and shed, you know. So what? Everyone does it, you know. They don't want to set up this community that first started off as, you know, 400 lots, then it went up to 800 lots at maximum price of 450,000 each. That the developers that Max Egan isn't involved with, doesn't know, just gave him 2.75 share. A share not only in the land, but in the say in the community and in the community's assets, which are all the businesses. So receiving cash-free profit as well. So why would someone he hardly knew <laughs> his his words, you know, I don't know them yet. Yeah, well, I won't give that away yet anyway. Um, yeah, so the current thing being sold is being sold under the guise of this original application. But that original application only involves three lots that only were two different addresses, 2924 and, well they don't mark it there, but it is actually 2984. And it's kind of not 2984 because it's more the Misty Mountains Cabin Tourist Retreat attraction or whatever, you know, another business income that wouldn't see the light of day as far as taxes are concerned tax-free income, undeclared profit. So there is no new development application and the original application that they are selling the current project on, and this is the whole project, all of this, four different categorised owners and one, two, three, four, five different addresses, not two, five. So not at any stage have any of those ones in black been submitted to the council for a development approval application or a development application. None whatsoever. So how do you develop something without putting in an application? I mean, these, um, this consulting firm that put all this information together makes it look legitimate, but the only thing that is legitimate is what the council holds as records. If there's no development application there for any of those in black, and even this one here, well, the days are ticking by close to see where that's going to be defaulted on and that's going to go back into the liquidator's hands to be put up for auction. And interesting too that it's been mentioned how it was sold for virtually twice its market value because the purchaser wanted to get the property because he's involved he's in, with these um, phoenixing companies. They're all, and I hope that that ATSIC announcement in September, top of their list is Wollumbin Horizons that uh, the Queensland courts heard because the council sued Wollumbin Horizons. Don't know why they'd hear it in Queensland, maybe 
Ah, uh, registered office. I didn't check that. Maybe the registered office is in Queensland. So the council th sued through Queensland jurisdiction because, you see, it was easy to sue Gillian Norman because she lived there in the same jurisdiction and she could go to the same court. New South Wales is a long way away from Tasmania. It's a lot harder across jurisdictions to actually get a successful outcome. And even, uh, I think as uh, Gillian Norman found out, in the same jurisdiction, you just don't know whether the mayor's wife, I mean the mayor's husband that started all of this off, doesn't have friends that are, that are judges or whatever either. You know, you just don't know how deep it goes because the way that the judge refused to hear any of the people that were actually petitioning the court to hear how they had money stolen from them, didn't want to hear it. And it was only through their continual protests that even any action started to happen. And Gillian Norman, I mean, she has been one hell of a gutsy lady out there, you know, leading the charge and copying it all. I mean, the, the situation she's in now, she's got two judgments against her for $200,000 a piece plus costs. This is after she's tried getting her money back and warning others about it and the developers wanted to shut her down. And she was not only right about being picked on because she you know she was being vocal and they wanted to shut her down but then she found out about phoenixing and how they just why in the first place it appeared that they were buying back the same things that they were selling it was ridiculous so no the nightcap on Minjimbo does not have council approval in any way shape or form None. The original one lapsed, there is no new development, and if stage one was developed, there would be a stage two application. There is no stage two application. There isn't even a stage one application anymore. That is six years old. And these people are selling the idea on that application, the original application, but sending out this glossy little tourist pamphlet to sell people that it's all legitimate because, wow, look, Planet Consulting, that's a real legitimate business. And you look them up on the website and they do real big legitimate things. Well, yeah, who paid for all this consulting and this glossy tourist brochure, eh? The people that are going to court to try and get them shut down because all they do is take off people, you get nothing but ripped off out of them. Even the people that are brought in now. Remember Pete Evans because I'm not going to bring him up uh, in detail here but we're supposed to feel sorry for poor Pete because um, he's speaking out. I don't know about what but, you know, <laughs> one of those things. Pete Evans was involved in the uh, Bulla Bulla, Mount Warning, uh, Village, Nightcap, all the same difference. And even in here, I've pointed out in previous videos, the, um, they make quite clear that Bulla Bulla and uh, Nightcap are the same thing. And yet that was part of the problem in not being able to shut them down in the first place was not being able to prove the link well the developers went to the consultants to put out this glossy brochure to make them look pretty you know you brag too much you give away too much information too much information like didn't even know ncv enterprises existed until i saw this that's on the list to uh, hand at sick as well. I tell you what, it's getting long. A lot of people involved. This Peter Van Lyshout, as I said, that original DA that came through, he was involved with, as well as um, Derek um, Zillman, 
who's involved with Zimmerland. I know that f for and Mark McMurtry and probably Adrian Brannock. I don't know how, how deep and far these, these ones go back, but you know what? Sharks tend to swim in the same pool and see where all the, the good feeding grounds are, round them all up and corral them, and when one fails, they just redress it and put it out as something else. And people are tired of that. Max Egan expects me to believe that he gave away his share to his sister because he's 63 years old and he doesn't want to build at his age. <laughs> his sister is, according to him, two years older. And why would he give away not only the land but also the share in the business so he could be completely, completely reliant upon donations from other people, from using other people because if people didn't support him, he can't support himself. I support myself. I'm not asking you for money. I'm not asking you for money. And if you want to hear me keep talking, you know, donate. Because if you don't donate, I can't keep talking. Oh, bullshit. You know what? I can keep making these till the cows come home. And I can do it all for free. <laughs> the only thing it's going to cost you is time. So, yeah, I better get off this subject before I reveal too much about what I don't want to bring out just yet because, as I said, I've got other things going on that I don't want to tip my hand on. So, um, just hang on a sec. You know, I suppose uh, if it came down to it, you could say that uh, I don't like con men. I don't like con women. When I say con men, it's a general general term. Don't want to be gender specific or upset anyone. <laughs> I just don't like liars. I don't like people that present as something and they're not even that. They're frauds. And if they were only hurting themselves, it would be all well and good, but they're not. They're hurting many others. And as far as I'm concerned, as I said, it all comes for free, my attitude. I don't need a good reason to dislike someone other than the fact that you are hurting too many people and it's not on. And I'm sorry to tell you that, well, if you do get me to that stage, I'm not going to give up until I'm finished. I'm not a quitter. You know... <laughs> Max Egan is, I'm not going to stop until he's done. And by the time that's done, I will have exposed many more and proven them to be frauds and fakes as well. And I want people to start, if you can see what I can see, I want you to start speaking out as well too. Start challenging these alternative narratives and these controlled narratives. They are misleading people and they are discouraging people that they can make a difference. You know, you cannot make a change in the world if you don't think you can make one. You'll just sit back and wait for someone to do it for you. That's what Max Egan wants you to do. No stake in the outcome, have apathy. Wait for someone else to change it. And then when you come out of hiding like Max Egan, what have other people changed it to? Is it what you wanted? Do you like it? Or are you just still going to complain? Well, I'll tell you what, you do need to participate. You do need to have a stake in the outcome. And you need to start believing in you and all those around you. You can make a difference. One person can change history. Remember that. So if you really want to do something, get your friend involved. But just make sure that they're not as dumb as the ones that Max Egan's got. Because Max Egan is not a good friend to have. 
Do you know how many secrets he's given out? Oh, too many. And you know what? The more he tries defending himself and saying that others are defending him, I love it. He's incriminating those that would protect him are uh, running the same kind of bullshit and controlling the narrative and making an income off people doing it too. Start denying these controlled narratives their income for a start. Because we don't know how far these controlled narratives go. How far the Lolita Express and creating scenarios that they bring people in to blackmail them and control them over goes. If you watch the dollhouse over here, as I said, I think I said it in this video, I don't know, I've typed it twice today. <laughs> the first episode, they mention that there's only one dollhouse. And you think it, of only small things, you know, that there is only one of something. But then as you listen along through the episodes, you know, someone says, you know, you're only focused with one dollhouse. There are 20 throughout the world that control everything, every level of everything and every narrative. And that's what we've actually got to consider. I'll leave a link for... Um, one of my new channels <laughs> that I've uploaded to. We're going to sneak in some other stuff and see how long it lasts. Just as curiosity if I don't draw attention to it, you know. We'll see how it goes anyway. Maybe I already have and I've recorded it. Max doesn't know, does he? So, um, yeah. You want to start doing your own stuff too? And after... Uh, Again, I'm not sure whether I told it in this video or the previous one. I also uploaded it to my archive. The whole of all the videos I've done on Mac so far. I thought I'd blow it. I'll just put it so anyone searching on Google now can find it then. They can look in the archives and it'll come up under the videos. Sweet! Now even more people, larger audience, will get to see it. And hopefully, you know... Because if we all start acting against these controlled narratives, then we can start creating a better one. We need to create a positive outcome. We've seen 2020. You know, we look, we're not wearing blinders, and I don't need to repeat it all to you. I don't need to tell you what's going on. You know what's going on. The thing is, you don't know what to do, do you? Well... One of the things is that those that can help is every of your other fellow man. And if your fellow man is being misled by loud, controlled narratives, we need to bring in other voices, the other options, and we need to bring down those ones that would bring about everything that the New World Order want. I mean, everything that Max talks about that we're doomed to get is exactly what the New World Order want. It's almost like the subliminal, repetitive nature of constantly reinforcing all this negative and, and helplessness. That, and what can you do? You're only one person. You've got to, you know, bunker down and hide away and think of yourself and your family and, you know, bugger the world. Yeah, hide. But you can't hide, can you? Because someday you've got to come out. You can't hide forever. One day you're going to have to make a decision. What do You don't know what decision to do now? I don't think any of us does. It's a bit like um, treading water, isn't it? Wondering if the sharks are going to circle and if they do, what's going to happen if it does happen. But the thing is that until we do see the sharks coming in more, we need to get rid of the ones we already know exist. They are misleading people. I'm calling to all the parents out there, not the Max Egan types that have had nothing to do with raising kids, the real mothers and fathers. I'm calling on you. You know what it's like to care 
for other living beings in this planet. You know what it's like to, to watch others even make the choice because there's some idiot out there giving them stupid information and leading them up the garden path. We need to be a collective parenthood and nurture this humanity into a much different future reality than what Max Egan has in mind and what the New World Order has in mind too. It's just not going to happen what they want. But you've got to want to not want that and not even believe that they can achieve it. I don't believe they can achieve it for one second because I have faith in every single one of you, all of you in humanity. Because I know that there is already enough of us that do not what, want what we see. We want something different. And as parents, it really is simple in what we want, isn't it? You can see that what we want for our children is no more or less than what we want for each other. And in remembering that, call out the fakes. Call out those that have spent their whole life using and abusing others, never been there for the children that they had, or even the partner they committed to. No responsibility, and yet now presumes to know anything? To guide others? No. Sorry. You're leading people down the wrong wrong track. And I don't care how many come in opposition to me. It just, it doesn't matter. What matters is stopping the negative outcome that Max Egan is trying to convince people is going to happen. It's not. You control what happens. You can make a difference. Just one person. And it doesn't have to be big. You don't even have to be known to have made that difference. But you can make a difference. And all you've got to do is sit down and ask yourself. I tell you, if you haven't had a conversation with yourself, do it. It's the best advice you'll ever give yourself. Go find yourself a private place where nobody can interrupt you and talk out loud to yourself. And you know all those things that swim around in your head and you make up all these excuses? Say them out loud to yourself too. Because when you hear them out loud, you realise what a dickhead you are. You'll go, wow. No wonder I'm still stuck in this same place because I'm still kidding myself and when I hear it said, it's bullshit. And you can't get upset at yourself, can you? You could if someone else called you out on it. But when you say it to yourself, when you, when you give yourself your own excuses, you kind of realise how pathetic it is and how pathetic it sounds and how right others may have been when they say that you're avoiding the issues and not them. Just a little bit of something to leave you on because I think I've talked about enough today. I've got a lot more to say and get into, but I've got to, uh, yeah, I've got to do a lot of editing for that. <laughs> anyway, take it easy, everyone. And uh, just remember, you can change the world. It does only take one. But if you want to change it faster, get your friends together. Take it easy. I'll talk to you next time.